So welcome back, everyone. Um, we have uh, uh, this uh, assignment uh, seven that we're discussing already uh, this week. Uh, this is the last homework assignment before the final assignment. So I'm actually planning to post the final assignment uh, sometime this weekend, maybe even as soon as tomorrow. And it will be our final programming project. It's like a final project. I'm thinking of, uh, uh, you know, just another project that uses more uh, a combination of classes uh, and uh, uh, should be interesting uh, to start working on it. Uh, we'll, we'll try to use dynamic collections, Java generics, uh, in that particular assignment. And uh, that's also going to be most likely our, our last big item agenda this semester. So we're getting into that territory. So today hopefully we'll wrap up with arrays, a couple more demonstrations related to the arrays. Uh, but before we get started, any particular things you want me to discuss or discuss or go over, let me know. Okay, uh, so let's get started. So I'm jumping back to the array presentation this week. Uh, and uh, trying to finish it, uh, we we talked about uh, arrays utility class, which provides us uh, access to uh, very convenient uh, algorithms. One of them is sort. So sort, of course, is a very popular algorithm, and we oftentimes want to uh, make sure that our collections are sorted. I'll give you an example. If I'm uh, if I'm processing uh, uh, an array, an, uh, a long array of integers, and um, in case if I know that I will be looking for values in that array of integers, and I will be doing a lot of searches in that array of integers, it actually will make sense to sort it before executing searches, because uh, a binary search which is expecting a sorted array of integers uh, will work faster. So sorting sometimes, you know, quite often you want to sort things before you can display to the user so that the items appear in a certain order. Collections of things are more readable in alphabetical or numerical order, so that's very common, of course. But internally, if you want to search for something, uh, quite often, it makes sense to sort the array. Now, if I only need to search it once, maybe it's an overkill because, uh, you know, I if I sort it or if I just do my search for a particular value in that array, it shouldn't make much difference. It should be uh, equally, you know, slow, uh, so to say. But if I know that I will be using multiple searches, and quite often, so my array doesn't change um, a lot, but rather, uh, I do a lot of searches through that, uh, you know, collection of data. Then it makes sense to sort. So it's obvious that uh, most likely, if if the challenge was to sort an array of numbers, uh, what we would do uh, would probably just uh, uh, assign uh, particular elements, uh, the values, to swap the values to implement the sort. And we're just moving those numbers from place to place. So with numbers, uh, it's possible to sort an array just basically uh, moving things around. And we'll see example of so sorting algorithms in our next presentation. So I'm not going to uh, spend much time today on sorting itself, on, on, on the ways to sort uh, arrays. What I'd like to spend time on today is this. Recall that we've uh, done some work with dice. So we have a die uh, class, which supposedly you can roll to generate sort of random numbers. It remembers perhaps the the, the face value, the last combination uh, that uh, was rolled. Okay, so that's pretty pretty decent uh, concept, right? So we can use this this die or or pairs of dice and so forth in different situations and try to use them as meaningful uh, you know concepts. That's one thing. But what if I have a collection of dice 
collection of dice, right? So I may have uh, 8, 10, 100, and I kind of create them and they automatically assign themselves a random face value, like if they were instantly rolled, so the face values are defined. What if I wanted to sort an array of dice by their values? What if I wanted to do that? Can I do that? It's, it's, it's reasonable because, after all, the concept of dice is just a, a, a sort of like a mechanical representation of a number from 1 to 6 or from, from 1 to 20, whatever the number of sides is. But it's, it's just that, that conceptually is no different than, a, and, than an integer number. So I can sort numbers pretty well. Can I also sort objects? So the challenge is that now I have something that I've used my programming language to create those objects, which the promise was that those could be very useful concepts. But can I now pretend that I'm also you know, working with them so that they can be ordered? be used as, as numbers. So let's try this out. The answer is yes, you can. And you can still use this, this, very, this same generic algorithm to accomplish uh, the sort. And uh, the only thing is that we need to make uh, our, um, our classes comparable. We need to say that our classes are not comparable so that uh, uh, somehow the sorting algorithm, this method in particular, can compare individual objects and figure out that uh, one should be before another in a, a particular ordering uh, situation. So let's uh, talk about this. I've started my NetBeans, uh, and I'm going to just say um, a new project, a start new project. And this time, I'm actually running out of different names, but I'll try this. Demo uh, A7, uh, A7 2. Uh, version 2, how about this? A7 V2, crazy name. All right, and uh, go to my portable drive here. And uh, I still don't think that this is a good name for a main class main class where the main method is should probably still be named main app. So I, you know, when I remember, I, I change that. If I don't remember, I sometimes just go and rename uh, that class after, you know, I already created my project. So I have some basic setup. That's good. I have my main, um, uh, main app here defined. So, so something already happening here. So I can actually compile it, right? So this is my main class. Now, I would like to reuse the die class from uh, Tuesday, I suppose, right? So if I look at my projects that I already have, on Tuesday, I was using this particular project. And under source, of course, under the name of my package, there is a die.java. So let me have it, right? So let me copy it over. Uh, to my new project so that I can at least uh, re, re, uh, reuse uh, at least one class that I created before. So paste. So hopefully it makes sense. So let's, uh, uh, as you can see, the, the die Java was immediately noticed by the uh, NetBeans uh, uh, programming environment and it uh, quickly added it to the list. So let's open this file here from within the, the um, in development environment, and of course it's unhappy with this older package name. It's supposed to match the folder, so I will simply uh, just kind of copy and paste the new name of the package right here, so uh, things are consistent, and now I should be able to compile. What I would like to add to my class to make it, uh, you know, sort of complete, uh, is to add a constructor. Right, add a constructor, perhaps a uh, uh, default constructor would be useful. Uh, we'll keep it uh, public, right, so that everyone can construct this object. And uh, I probably need to have uh, an integer face. I'll say private 
integer case value, which I will populate in my constructor. So I have this uh, face value uh, integer. And right here, what I'll do is just to say fa fa face value equals roll. So I'll roll it. I will also modify the roll operation so uh, that uh, I will, uh, you know, say fa face value, use this formula to, com to compute the that particular uh, uh, pseudo-random number and return it from this function, from this method. Okay. Alright, so I return it from this method, so I have this roll operation. Uh, my side count is a hard-coded one, so I know that you probably use in constructors that pass the side count. So what I could do here is this. In the default constructor, simply create side count to make it more consistent with what uh, you're doing. Uh, side count uh, variable and uh, hard coded in the default constructor to 6. Right? Make it 6. Now in the get side count, change it to return side count uh, variable, which is now part of my class. So I think it makes sense to have a die with the face value, with the side count, and then, you know, have this particular constructor, and then, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I always uh, prefer to um, have a constant variable that describes a literal number. Let me save this and then we'll make this change too.